Will you please welcome a true Democrat and a fine parliamentarian, Bernard Jenkins. Um, hello everybody, uh, great to see you and great to see you in such good spirits. You're in much better spirits than a great number of my colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> because I fear, either by incompetence or otherwise, although probably a combination of the two, on the part of our own government, that the United Kingdom has been manoeuvred into a kind of Hobson's choice. Yes. Either a terrible withdrawal agreement, whose terms make it unconscionable, or an extension of Article 50. I'm afraid all the signs are that the government will, in the end, rule out a so-called no-deal Brexit, or at least cooperate with those who would seek to thwart it. And I'm watching that clock, and I want that clock to carry on ticking down. So just bear that in mind as I, as I make my remarks. And this is despite the fact that the government and the Prime Minister has repeatedly said that leaving without a deal is a viable option. No yes. deal is better than a bad deal. Yes. Now, Wikipedia, I looked it up. It says, quote, A unilateral declaration of independence, UDI, is a formal process leading to the establishment of a new state by a subnational entity which declares itself independent and sovereign without a formal agreement with the national state from which it is, is, seconded, is seceding. Well, that pretty well sums up what an increasing number exactly. in this country uh, want the government to do. Indeed, many who voted Leave thought that was what they were voting for. Yeah. Now, it appears that all this has been jettisoned. If reports of it are believed, there is little concrete evidence that the government intends to follow through on leaving the EU without a formal withdrawal agreement, or that they want anyone to have confidence in the government's no-deal preparations. When faced with the choice of fulfilling the mandate <coughs> delivered by the British people, or leaving on March the 29th, or extending Article 50, um, a situation brought about entirely by the non-viability of the withdrawal agreement, the government seems likely to blink and choose to extend. Now, if the WA the withdrawal agreement goes through as it stands, the government would be likely to lose a vote of confidence. The DUP have made it clear that the backstop is constitutionally unacceptable, and it, as it is presently drafted. Yes. Without their support, as a government, we do not have a majority. Without their support, we will not long have a government. There would therefore either be an early general election, unless perhaps enough Conservatives discover the presence of mind to force what most Conservatives really want, which is a change of policy. Some say it's leavers who must compromise, but Conservative leavers in Parliament, the ERG, have made massive compromises. Perhaps too many. Contemplating, contemplating supporting everything else in the withdrawal agreement that we don't like, so long as Theresa May agrees to replace the backstop. We have accepted the enormous financial obligations stretching decades into the future that are in this agreement. We have accepted 21 months of a so-called implementation period during which EU laws will continue to be set and applied to the United Kingdom, but during which we will have no say over them. We have worked with other wings of the party and supported the Malthouse Compromise. Now, this is a remarkable alliance of leavers and sensible remainers who got together to try and save the present situation. It contemplates an extension of the implementation period beyond that of the withdrawal agreement, as well as payments to the EU if we leave without a deal, in order for the EU and the UK to agree a basic interim free trade agreement, avoiding tariffs if we leave without the withdrawal agreement. Now, if these proposals and accepting the necessary trade-offs isn't compromised, then we clearly have, have different definitions of that word. Mm. This was only to deliver the ultimate objective, to leave. Mm. Why should we ever compromise on that? Mm. Now, it is revealing that the government seems to have refused this joint olive branch, I regret to say. And it is now becoming evident that the dreadful backstop is what some of our own ministers actually wanted all along. Mm. Yeah. So having persuaded the whole party, including the ERG, 
to vote for the so-called Brady Amendment last week, in which uh, Parliament voted to replace the backstop with alternative arrangements, the government appears to have backtracked on that proposal to replace. The government has failed to adopt the perfectly viable alternative arrangements to avoid a hard border in Northern Ireland, which even uh, Monsieur Barnier has talked up, because ministers appear determined to have the backstop as what has been officially described, not as an insurance policy never to be used, but as a bridge to the future relationship without the unilateral right which we enjoy now to leave the arrangements in the future. The political declaration tells us what this means. It proposes to maintain the UK in what it calls a single customs territory which obviates the need for checks on rules of origin, which is a customs union by any other name. And this is back to the undeliverable and unwanted divisive checkers proposals which will not deliver the UK the right to conclude comprehensive free trade agreements with the rest of the world. It is no good, for example, the Governor of the Bank of England this morning, talking about trade deals the UK could do on services if we cannot also have full regulatory autonomy over our domestic and product regulation and full control of our tariff <coughs> schedules. But we can't do a trade deal. Do a trade deal <coughs> unless you can offer the trade-offs that the exporter to your own country wants to have. Now the tragedy of all this is that nearly all sides recognise that the backstop is simply not necessary. I mentioned Monsieur Barnier. He referred to what, what he called operational measures that could be taken to avoid a hard border. <coughs> Simon Coveney, the Ireland's Deputy Prime Minister, has referred to customs checks taking place at sea, by which he clearly means not at the border itself. Well, this is what we've been trying to explain to everybody uh, for months. The impetus for the backstop remaining in the withdrawal agreement therefore appears to have come from our own government. And it is bizarre that while the UK has voted to be a sovereign independent nation state, more like Canada or Australia, take your pick, somehow we keep being told that this would be disastrous. I think it is the protracted uncertainty about the final outcome which is generating the most damage, but sadly this seems inevitable unless we just leave on the 29th of March. Mm -hmm. The proposed compromise no deal Brexit has the advantage of ending economic uncertainty much more quickly than any yes. other option. <laughs> it does, however, appear increasingly likely that the consequence of defeating the withdrawal agreement again is that the government may opt to extend Article 50. Now I ask the question, back to Hobson's choice, would it be better to extend Article 50 and therefore to remain a full member of the EU with all our rights to a voice, a veto, and to vote and to participate in the institutions, and with the unilateral right to leave at the time um, uh, in our, uh, of our own choosing, or to subscribe to the withdrawal agreement, which could bind us indefinitely. Could we, could, well, wait for it. I knew this choice would annoy you. Could we um, substitute um, continued membership as the transition, instead of the withdrawal agreement? Or would the EU impose impossible terms for such a continuation, including a continued pro prohibition on developing new trading arrangements with non-EU countries? But I hope the choice is not between leaving the EU under these terrible terms or simply extending the negotiation with the hope of finding something more acceptable later on or remaining part of the EU. The only outcome that delivers on the referendum is to leave on the 29th of March. Yeah. With or without a withdrawal agreement. And that doesn't mean no agreements at all. Agreements are already being put in place between the EU and the UK about what will happen uh, in the event of, uh, of, of that scenario. Choosing either withdrawal agreement as it stands, or a delay, forcing us into that choice, would further corrode public trust in our political institutions. Let's just think for a moment, what will happen 
to all the main parties in the, in the EU Parliament elections if we are still in the EU uh, and we have elections uh, to that Parliament from this country. What are the prospects of a resurgent UKIP or a new Brexit party exploiting the understandable and widespread public despair with Westminster mm. politics? Yes. Whatever the prospects, in the end, I'm optimistic about this country. In the end, the UK will leave the European Union. It cannot be stopped. In the end, having given the choice to the British voter, the politicians can't take back control to themselves. It is completely democratically and politically unsustainable. In the end, this institutionalised denial of democracy will not stand. In the end, this country depends on the wisdom and resolve of its people, yes. not just on the few politicians in charge at any particular time. Yes. We politicians need to be reminded, if we do not deliver what the people want, the people will elect different politicians. Yes. The voters stunned their rulers by voting leave in the first place, and I warned David Cameron that that would happen. <laughs> and they were right. Who in their right mind would vote to join the EU now? <laughs> <laughs> the voters measured up the risks of leaving against the risks of staying in, of suffering more Eurozone bailouts, more migration crises, more centralisation of power, more denial of accountability and consent, yes. and more economic and social failure. In the end, they could see that EU membership risks their country being integrated ever further into an EU that is beyond national democratic control. In the end, they want the UK to recover the democratic national self-government, which is the birthright of every people of every nation. In the end, in the end they have the competence, which so many of the top of politics seem to lack that the UK can and will thrive and prosper outside the EU. In the end, the politicians who want to thwart Brexit or who lack the courage to believe in the UK's independent democratic future will find themselves on the wrong side of history. Yes. <laughs>